the difference between a sacostomy and an appendicostomy, which is a great question. Um, and we actually, um, we can talk about it, but we actually have um, some slides too that might help answer that question um, with some images as well. So these are all terms that I think people, doctors, nurses, uh, families often use in interchangeably, but are really um, quite different. So all of them are ways to administer an enema in an anagrade fashion. So instead of through the bottom, it's a way to give a, a flush in a forward fashion. Um, the, the way we kind of prefer to do that here is uh, through a Malone, which I showed a picture of earlier, which is using the uh, appendix to make a valve, and it's usually brought out through the belly button. That is uh, what I would call a Malone appendicostomy. A cecostomy is, works in a similar way, but it's usually what the surgeon would do is use um, some kind of device to place in the cecum, which is uh, the colon, and that allows them to give the flush again in an integrated way. That what that requires though, as you can see from the slide, um, is there's, an, there's something on the outside of the skin and that can either be a cecostomy or a chate tube or um, some, some buttons or G-tube kind of devices that Monica can show later if people are, are interested. Um, so I think um, going back to the question, the first question, so um, a, a patient is getting um, Malone flushes with vagal response um, and seems to have poor motility that they say a sacostomy is the only answer. Um, and I think this is a very important topic to talk about, so I love this question. Um, we often have um, families who come to us and they have been given a sacostomy or, or really any form of access into the bowel through the abdominal wall. Um, and they come to us frustrated because they've been given this procedure and they said things still are not working. This, this procedure didn't help me, the surgery didn't work. Um, and that's frustrating. And so um, I think the important thing for us to relay here is it's not the surgery that changes anything other than instead of being able to give an enema from the bottom, you can give an enema through the abdomen, uh, through the belly wall, into the bowel. Um, it, it gives you an opening, but what what it doesn't do is, is treat you. So I think the important message that we want to give is if you're getting a procedure to um, be able to give an enema through the abdominal wall, you have to have someone who is willing to, to know what flush to give you through that to help with your needs, with your motility, with your constipation. So the answer is not really the surgery. The answer is the solution that goes into um, the enema that helps with the problem of constipation, motility, the belly symptoms, that type of thing. You know, if you have anything I to elaborate. I think that brings up an important point in that before we offer surgical access, so a Malone, a cecostomy, whatever route that would be, in our program we, we want to make sure that we've been successful with enemas and flushes before. It's really important to do that. Um, it also sets expectations because if, if for some reason we're not able to be successful, which is pretty uncommon in a patient with spina bifida, then at least we know that we may continue to have issues with if we do the anagrade route. But almost always, once we have a good regimen from um, a rectal enema route, we can convert that over to a more effective uh, route through a Malone or a mace or an appendicostomy.